Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to another episode of Celebrating Act 2. Today, my partner John Coleman and I have the pleasure of speaking with the Brain Whisperer, Stephen Campbell. How are you, Hello. Stephen? Hi, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Great, Steve. It's, it's good, good to see you again. Uh, I've Thank got a you. question for you, and it regards not only people who are retired and over 50, most of our audience is over 50, right. but also people who are in their working years, could be up to 70, quite frankly, mm -hmm. and, and below 50. Yeah. And it's about success. Everybody wants to be successful at whatever we do, whether it's in gardening or whether it's business. And the, the real question is, since you are the brain whisperer, is success just in your head? Well, yes and no. I know that's kind of a crazy answer, but there's an element of truth to it. Success comes from a lot of things, uh, but let's go back to it being in your head. Everything this way, everything begins with how you think. Everything comes from the way you think. As I drive by, as I drive over the Golden Gate Bridge, I am always amazed at what this bridge is. But that bridge did not start with somebody's plans. It didn't begin with somebody's projects. It began in the mind of one man who, yes, who happened to be a reporter for the San Francisco Gazette. B of A provided the money and the rest is history but it began in somebody's mind. Everything begins with our mind. The wonderful thing about our mind is that our mind can take in amazing things. And there are some wonderful characteristics that we have learned about our mind that can be so, that can help us be successful in ways that you wouldn't even believe. I think the biggest characteristic is the fact that our brain believes what we tell it without question. So when we say to ourselves, I am successful, the brain says, yes, you're right, you absolutely are. When we say I may not be, the brain also agrees with that. So yes, success really begins with how we think. Let me explain. For the first 42 years of my life, I said to myself, I'm really stupid. I'm not successful at anything. I didn't do well in school. I didn't do well in college. I didn't do well in math. I just didn't do well in many things. Because I said to myself, for most of my life, I'm a dumb person. And my brain said, okay, yes, you are. Because that's what you're saying. And I believe everything you tell it, whether it is true or not. But then back in the 70s, even before the Apple, I discovered computers. And I began tinkering around with computers on my own. And I discovered that I had a real knack for not only tinkering, but understanding how they worked. So much so that I went back to school and I got a graduate degree in computer science. And I found myself teaching computer courses in universities and doing really well at it. Well, one day the Dean came to my office. He said, one of our math professors has quit, Steve, so you are our new math professor. Well, I freaked out because I had never up to that point been good at math. But he said, if you want a job, you better learn because you're teaching it next semester. So I ran down to the Rona Park Library and picked up all the books I could on brain-based learning. That's how this whole thing started. That's how my expertise in the brain began. And I taught my course based on how the brain learns and students began saying, oh my goodness, you're such a wonderful math teacher. I love the way you teach it. And then the Dean said, all the students say, I will only teach math and Ms. Cameron, my professor. And here's what I began doing, Art and John. I began listening to those students. I began listening to what those students were saying to me. And I realized that I'm a really good teacher because they were saying it. And the more I said it, the more the brain listened. And then the brain did another wonderful thing. And that is that it rewired itself. So eventually I became such a wonderful math teacher that I ended up writing two college textbooks on what do you think, computer science. 
So the point I want to make is that, yes, success really starts with how you think. But it also begins with what you're choosing to be successful in. If I decided I'm going to be a successful athlete, I would probably be spending my whole life and not doing well because I am not a natural athlete. Athletics is not important to me, but teaching is. So as you look at where you want to be successful, you want to ask yourself the question, where is my natural inclination? What am I naturally good at? When I began my own business in speaking, my wife said to me, one request I have from you, honey, and that is major in your majors. Let someone else do the bookkeeping. Let someone else do the marketing. You are a writer. You are a speaker. You will be successful at that. You could be successful at the other things, but it's going to take a lot of energy. And I would rather you put your energy into speaking. Now, here's another really interesting study that was made by Dr. Arno von der Riet of, Sunny, of Stony Brook in New York. He asked himself the question, does success breed success? And what he did is he took groups of 200 to 500 individuals four different groups, and he provided them with encouragement and money and signatures and political, uh, political campaigns. And then he studied how successful these people were. He did not tell them whether he believed in what they were doing or not. He just gave them the encouragement. What he discovered is that those people who were being encouraged in the beginning of their projects were the ones who were the most successful. Because when they were encouraged in the beginning, they said positive things about themselves. They said, oh my goodness, I'm getting really good feedback. I can do this. And of course, based on what we learned just a few minutes ago, what did their brain say? Their brain said, "Yep, yeah, you're right. You really can. And the more they said that, the more successful they became. So I guess what I want to do is leave your audience with this. Yes, success primarily comes with the way you think. And the wonderful thing about your brain is that your brain believes everything you tell it without question, no arguments. So when you're saying I'm being this way, the brain says, absolutely. And when you say I'm succeeding in that area, the brain says, absolutely too. And then it doesn't stop with that. It looks for ways of being successful. And that's exciting. Now there's, a negative part to this also, I ended up teaching math at the University of San Francisco. And one of my students came to my office and she said, Mr. Campbell, I just want to let you know that I am not successful in math. I've never been successful in math. In fact, I am a C student in math. I said, how do you know? Because I've never been successful in math. I've never gotten anything above a C. So I worked with her. And she got an A in the first midterm. Do you know what she said? As she looked at the A, she said, oh, Mr. Campbell, this is a mistake. What do you mean, Sue? She said, I have never been successful in math. And even though this A is an A, it must have been a mistake. I said, it's not a mistake. This is a genuine A. So then she looked at it longer. And then she looked up, her face just beamed, and she said, do you know what this means? I said, yes, I do, but you tell me. This means that when I flunk the next test, I can still maintain my C. I said, Sue, just get an A on every test. She said, I can't. Why? Because I am a C student and had never been successful. And she ended up being a C student. 
But you know, there's another way to look at this. And that is this in terms of success. When did your old life end? Your old life ended one second ago. So when did your new life begin? It began one second ago. So do the math, 60 seconds per minute, 60 minutes per hour, 24 hours per day. In one 24 hour period, you have 86,400 new opportunities for new life every single day. All you have to do is take them. Wow. Hmm. That's encouraging. That's encouraging. It is. It is. And uh, and I that's what we need for success, don't we? We mm -hmm. and we need to believe in ourselves. That's right. That's right. That's right. And realize that even when you mess up, even when you mess up, that's part of success. You look at the great leaders of the world, and you see how many times they have messed up. Sure. The great athletes of the world. How many times they missed the baskets and missed the balls yeah. and missed the home runs because that's what made them great. Failure is part of success. Well, this is, again, uh, great information. Anybody who has been watching your series uh, knows that essentially the brain believes whatever you tell it, whether it's negative, that's your student, mm -hmm. or being success, a successful math teacher, uh, somebody that we personally know. So That's anybody right. who doesn't think they can make it, you've got those 86,400 times a day. And that means that you can start this video, well, perhaps maybe not 86,000 times, but anytime you get down and think you can't do something, come back and, you know, put this on, put this on your redial list. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. You're welcome. Thank you so much. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.